Hi, this is George Miller from the Buffalo Bill Center of the West in Cody, Wyoming. And we're back again to take a look at another part of the Bighorn Basin. Today it's the Owl Creek Mountains in the southwestern part of the basin. And the Owl Creeks are bounded on one side by the Wind River Canyon. And many people in Wyoming would be familiar with this scene, driving down uh, south on Highway 120, right beyond Thermopolis. We can see some of our own friend there, the Chugwater Formation, that red rock from the Triassic period. As we look across, we see the Owl Creek Mountains. And this is probably what most people think of when they think of the Owl Creeks is going through the Wind River Canyon. And we'll look at the canyon later. It's an amazing place with every geological epoch represented in the rock structures. On the western side, we have the Absorca Mountains. So that's the boundary on the western side. Absorca is on the west, Wind River Canyon on the east. And that defines the Owl Creek Mountains. Now the Owl Creek Mountains run east-west, so we have a north face and a south face. And that north face is where we are today. And we can see they're not quite as rugged and tall as the Absorcas, but they are much taller than the ones that we visited last week, the Bridger Mountains. The highest elevation in the Owl Creek Mountains is 9,878 feet above sea level, or 3,011 meters above sea level. So you can see they're higher than the Bridgers, and you can snow still up. You can see snow still up on the ridge line there. Well. Down in the lowlands or the foothills of the mountain, there's enough water and creeks to support agriculture in a bigger way. So there are a lot of cattle ranches down here. So cattle are one of the resources that we'll see down here in the lower elevations. And another um, part of the resource down here is sheep. To enhance that agriculture, back in the 1950s, a dam was planned. And this is the dam. This is called the Anchor Dam. And the Anchor Dam was an amazing structure that was supposed to create a reservoir for agricultural use. The only problem was that the underlying rock where the reservoir was to be is dolomite. Now, dolomite's a lot like limestone and it can be dissolved in water. So there are lots of sinkholes in this reservoir and the water would drain out. They've tried filling it with concrete, thousands of tons of concrete, and to no avail. They couldn't get water to stay in this reservoir. So the reservoir never really fills. It gets a little bit of water and they can use that water for agricultural purposes um, late in the summer, but it doesn't really hold enough to make the whole agricultural enterprise bloom. We're looking at the north face, and we know that there's a lot of snow on the north face in the wintertime, so the runoff is pretty substantial. This whole idea of the dam was not a bad idea. It's just that the geology was not suitable to fill that reservoir. We can take a look here at Owl Creek, and it's a beautiful creek. Uh, with plenty of flow, but you can see it's dammed because you don't see a lot of debris on the banks from spring runoff. That spring runoff is controlled by the dam, and you can always tell the difference between a dammed creek and a creek that um, is natural with spring runoff. The mountains here are truly beautiful and lots of conifers. So you see a little bit different vegetation pattern here in the Owl Creeks than you do over in the Bridgers. The conifers are much lower. It's a much wetter environment. I hope you've enjoyed our, our trip to the Owl Creeks and we've got to be going on our way. If you like this series, be sure to hit subscribe and like. See you next time from the Buffalo Bill Center of the West.